Hi, this is Shadi and today I want to talk to you about my favorite judoka of all time, Kose Inoue. Now, of those competing today, it's probably Choshiro Maruyama, but my favorite of all time, it would have to be this man, Kose Inoue. And it's not because of his Uchimata or his, you know, quote unquote competitive record, but it's actually uh, far more than that and my first ever judoka profile was about him back when I had maybe 20 or 30 subscribers. Uh, today I want to talk about Kose but the man outside of the mats and I think that there's a lot that he can teach us. Like I said, you can win a million medals but that's all for you it's what you leave behind it's what you give to others that matters and i believe that Kose truly uh, presented a very good uh, example for us to follow outside of the mats so first let's talk about his olympic win in sydney back in 2000 it wasn't just about you know, getting the gold medal but um if you remember he held his mother's photo his late mother's photo up on that podium um, and he also uh, wrote her name on his belt because he quote unquote said that he wanted her to have a first class seat to his greatest achievement in life and he appreciated her support all his life and that's why he wanted her to be with him on that day so this is a man that appreciates those who truly push him and encourage him in this life. He isn't ungrateful. He also has family values. Family values is something that's very important and it can be, uh, you know, rarely found in antiquities until this day. Family values is something that I truly cherish and I truly uh, admire and also it cannot be found anywhere. And Jose in a way demonstrated that very well. He appreciates those who push him back when he was a child and also did not have anything, not even a name for himself. So that's the first thing. The second thing is here, you see, uh, he tore his uh, shoulder muscle from his chest muscle attempting an Uchimata. It was the finals of the Kano Cup back in 2005. And uh, regardless, here you can see he pushed through it and eventually got the Ippon. And this, this can teach you that, you know, you've made it till the end, you've worked this hard, do not let it go of some unexpected incident. Um, I still remember in uh, the finals of the Neiwaza Cup, I was getting just mauled by this black belt and uh, I couldn't breathe, I was just pressured and pressed down and I actually wanted to tap out and he was he had the Ude Garami or an Americana ready and locked almost uh, and I said like maybe I'll just tap out and and get rid of this misery because I cannot breathe I'm in so much pain etc but then I figured like no I went all this way up till the end I beat three by submissions he only won by points I'm gonna go till the end. Okay, I'm not gonna win because it's obviously too late. He had like a million points above me. But I'm gonna go till the end. I'm not just gonna give him the fight. And the same way with life. You know, you work years and years and years on whatever it is. And, you know, up until the end of we want to get what we've been working for, all this stuff start to happen. Just take a look on your life and Whenever you are about to achieve something, a lot of things happen. And I stayed in that fight till the end. I lost by points. I take, I lost on paper. Uh, but I did not give in. I did not give him the fight. I did not tap out. And I remember I rolled towards my shoulder so I would not give him the submission. Even though I did want to tap out because of so many factors. But... Regardless, I remember, I still remember, I thought about this incident in particular and I said like, no, I made it all this way till the end, I'm not gonna just give up. And in anything else that I've achieved in life, I think this would be a very good lesson. Um, you know, 
having studied nine years in college, uh, a bachelor's degree, master's degree, and a management degree. Uh, it was very easy to give up. I wanted to quit so many times, but I always had that in mind that, you know, I've started, I have went all this far. I'm, just, I'm not going to just give up. And I think Kose Inoue can teach us this through this very difficult uh, experience that he had against Yuri Ryback. And the final thing that I want to talk about is that his comeback in 2007, he not only came back from this horrible injury, he also switched categories and he was in the open weight category. He was in the plus 100. So even after coming back, he was still looking for new challenges. And okay, he wasn't very successful. His run lasted maybe a little bit bit more than a year from the Paris tournament in 2007 till the uh, All Japan of 2008 when he lost uh, in the finals. Um, he went and changed categories. He went on to fight men like Rene, etc. And he wanted to qualify for the Beijing Olympics, but during his fighting films interview, uh, you can see there is this sorrow in his eyes uh, and he looks downwards and he says that I wanted to go to Beijing. This is how I wanted to uh, finish my career, but that dream did not materialize. But however, Kose uh, gave it his all during his fight to qualify. Um, he got pinned in side control by a very large man that looks like a sumo wrestler. That man also beat Teddy Rene, so he, he uh, quote unquote, lost on his own terms. Um, he fought up until the end. So despite his mother's passing and also when he was recovering from injury, he lost his brother. So this is really the spirit of a true samurai, family values, uh, going all out on whatever you want to do in this life and I'm not talking about the samurai that bullied people in the village took their money blah 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 used their power do not bring this up this is not what I'm talking about I'm talking about the um, how do I say this the idealistic uh, virtues of a samurai and that is honoring others honoring your opponents and also going till the end all out in whatever you are doing in this life and he says that for him a judoka is like a samurai he cleans his room before a fight and he also fights till the death because for him to lose is to die and to win is to live to fight another day he truly carried the samurai spirit with him and there's nothing more honorable than this. This is not about his technique. This is not about his Uchimata. This is not about uh, his record. He is a three-time world champion. He is an Olympic champion. Uh, Shohei Ono recently uh, equalized his record, but Shohei Ono uh, is not showing us anything near what Kose showed us in terms of presence and character. He is a great champion, but he is not giving us much yet, but Kose gave us so much from technique uh, and from lessons uh, in order to push through in the mat and outside of the mat. Uh, I wanted to dedicate this video uh, to talk about this because, you know, it's not just competing because if I want to talk about Kose in general, people would talk about his records and his wins etc. But I wanted to talk about Kose in a way, the man, uh, the samurai. And, you know, Fighting Films has a DVD, like a box set of three DVDs that teach us about his technique and also his mindset. They dedicated one DVD out of three in order to talk about to us about how he was. And his interviews are very, very precious. And uh, I encourage you, if you can spare the dollars, 
I advise you to go get it. It's some in a way the samurai. It's called. Um, this is it. Um, I wanted to talk to about him as the person, not the judoka. This was Shadi, and thank you for listening.